Okay, so welcome to this 10-minute um, tutorial about how to use Eclipse and the debugger. So when you open Eclipse, this should be your opening screen. Make sure it looks just like this. And um, go to this button right here to open a new project. So click here and project or Java project. In this case, let's use project. And then Java project. <laughs> and just click next. Now we need to specify a project name in this case I'm gonna use CS2401 so here we go and down here let me just move this up a little down here just click finish okay so when you do that you should have this folder right here and if you click here you should have the SRC file which stands for source code so um, let me right click and go to new class so we just created a class and of course we need a name for it let me pull this a little downward and so let's call it um, CS2401 um, Eclipse Whoops. Okay, no, wait. Uh, eclipse. Much better. <laughs> okay. So let's click finish. And then now we have um, CS2401 Eclipse right here. And we have our class open. I'm going to move this a little to the left so we can take a better look. Okay, so right here. Um, I'm going to pause it right now for a little while just so I can um, type a method that actually does something. So um, just give me a second, please. Okay, we're back and now we have our main method right here which uh, calls another method. So public void stat main, uh, public static void main, I mean, and um, print nums4. Now, Right here below my main method, I have the method print nums. Um, okay, I'm having some problems with the audio, so if it's a little unsynchronized, uh, forgive me about that. Um, okay, so here we have our method print nums. Or, yeah, and we receive this parameter 4. Now, right below here, we have what the method's actually doing. Uh, we're not going to go into depth with the method, we're just going to learn how to debug it. So to debug, well, first to run it, you click on this icon right here. And this window will pop up, just click OK to open it. And um, right down here, you can see the result. Um, make sure it's in console. And let's put a little, move it a little upward. And that's kind of what I was expecting from this method. So um, now that now we know it works, and that's where your results are printed. But um, here we have a recursive call. So just um, it's going to go to the debug part of the program. So here you have your main method, your print nums method, and your class. Now let's click on the debug button. And this window should open. Make sure it's the same as what I'm seeing. So you should have this set to, um, if you have this set to breakpoints, just move it to variables. Then just leave the debug um, window up there as it is. Then you have the code, and make sure it's in console. Okay. So pretty much that's it. Now I'm going to move this a little up so we can see a bigger chunk of code. And to in order for you to debug, you need to uh, specify a stop uh, a breakpoint. So we're going to do that, toggle breakpoint. And then um just make sure it's on this line right here so we can call that method. The next thing we're going to do is um now we're going to run the program, and what it's going to do is it's going to run, and it's going to stop at that breakpoint, which is exactly our method call. 
to do that, um, I'm just going to click here on the debug button, and the program starts running. And uh, thank you, Vista, for this unwanted ad. So I'm just going to click unblock. Nice. Okay, now that we're done with that, sorry about that. Um, now we can run through the program. So this is the line of code we're currently in. Right here we have ARGS, for stands for arguments. And this basically is what's on our main method right here. But for the time being we don't care about it, and probably you'll never care about that, about it and the debugging. Now we have two buttons. The first one is step into, and the second one is step over. I mean step onto or over depends on the compiler. So the step into will uh, will click that when we have a method call and we want to step into the method to see what's being executed. In this case, print nums four. It's our method call, so we want to click step into. Now, once we do that, we end up in this little window right here, which is our method. Um, so here we're in the first condition of our method, and if you can look, um, we have the condition, this is the current line we're in, and we have n equals to 4 to a right, which is the parameter we used to pass. Now I'll, I'll click the step onto to go into the next instruction. Um, keep in mind that the variable you're seeing, it's uh, the one from the line after the uh, before the highlighted line. So we just click on going, keep on going, and S will display an empty space, which is our variable right here. Now I'm gonna step over a couple of times more. Remember this is a button. So if I click here, now I it's equal to one, which was a clear in the for loop. And then um I'll click it again. We go into the for loop again. Now when I um when I click it again, I'll end up having i equals to 2, and then I'll add it to the string, and then to 3, and then to 4, and then, here's where it gets interesting, I hit a method call, which, since it's a recursive method, it's calling itself. Now, right here, uh, what I want to do is not push the step over again, but the step into, so I can step into the method. So I'm going to click that again. We're going to do that a couple of more times. Um, now n is equals to 3, which is the parameter we passed. The rest of the variables got destroyed. So now s equals to empty, i equals to 1, i equals to 2, i equals to 3. Then we go into the method call again. We press the other button to go inside the method again. And then we are all the way back here, now with n equals to 2. I'm going to scroll through this real fast because we have seen it a couple of times. And now, when we get to the method again, if I press the step over button, which I just did, it takes me out to the next statement. The difference is that I just uh, finished doing all the calls. So automatically, everything that's uh, done in that method call, it's already done. So I don't have to see over and over and over again the same thing. So I didn't step into the method, I stepped over it. And by doing that, I received the values, and I just um, go to the next line of code. So basically, all this is already executed. Now, since it's a recursive call, here we um, if we click uh, step over. We can see how it's going to be calling recursively the last line of code. Um, so by clicking step over a couple of times, I'm going to be doing some printing, as it is said on the... Um, command, so I'm just going to do it. I'm going to print 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. Notice that up and to the right I can still see the values of the variables. Now I'm done with the recursion calls. I'm in the end of my main method, so now I basically finished uh, debugging the program and I can see it works. So when you see this window right here, it means that you're already done. Um, now in case your program is still running, because of any reason. Um, well, here you have a this. You don't care about this because that's mainly what's making Java work. So even though it's a variable, you don't care about that variable. Um, it's over now. 
So one last thing to keep in mind is um, I'm gonna go back to my well. If you need some help, here's always the help menu, and guess what? It helps. Um, if uh, huh. I'm just gonna close this, I'm gonna go to Java. Now by doing that, um, I ended up right here again on my code and I can start modifying or doing whatever I want. Now I just realized that down here in the console I have a square red button. Um, that button right here. So that means that the program is still running for some reason. If I just click there the program will terminate and then you can keep on working. So basically that's it for this short Java tutorial. I hope you find it useful or helpful and um, have a nice day.